As much as everyone's been enjoying Disney Plus's latest Marvel series, we can't help but point out that She-Hulk Attorney at Law has a Marvel cameo problem. Did you notice it too? If not, keep on watching today's video to know more about this problem and how the MCU can solve it. Trust us, you don't want to miss this. By the way, there are some major spoilers ahead concerning the series' latest episode. She-Hulk has a Marvel cameo problem, and here's what Marvel can do to address it. She-Hulk is well recognized for her levity and self-referential meta-comedy in the comics, with a particular feminist edge. Breaking the fourth wall long before Deadpool, this effective technique helped to distinguish John Byrne's groundbreaking sensational She-Hulk from the competition in the 1980s and make Jennifer Walters into the sassy and gritty jade giantess we know and love today. It's exciting to finally see a fun, female-led Marvel series tackle realistic topics like navigating a male-dominated workplace and online dating from a genuine and relatable female perspective after Shulky's eagerly anticipated MCU debut. With director Kat Koiro at the helm and a largely female writer's room led by Jessica Gao, a fascinating focus on the misogyny and sexism Jennifer encounters daily as a deputy district attorney. Quote, anger and fear, those are just the baseline emotions for any women just existing, unquote as well as in later episodes throughout the news and social media coverage of her cases set the tone for the courtroom comedy strong opening. Jennifer embraces her Hulk and heads up a special superhuman law division at a rival firm despite hilariously thinking that superheroism is for, quote, billionaires and narcissists and adult orphans for some reason, and wondering whether the Avengers even offer healthcare, maternity leave, a pension, or even a salary. She-Hulk attorney at law quickly establishes itself as the, quote, fun lawyer show that Jen promised in the first episode of the season while also delving into Jennifer's central conflict as she tries to balance her well-established and demanding career with her newly discovered powers and the expectations that come with them. A wacky and enormously entertaining comedy in the vein of Ally McBeal and Fleabag set against a Marvel backdrop is produced by the novel storytelling device and the film's revivifying entertainment premise with orphan black star Tatiana Maslany absolutely nailing Jennifer's quick-witted humor and fourth-wall breaks. But what really distinguishes the sitcom from earlier MCU small screen productions are the entertaining and really relevant day-to-day -day situations Jennifer must deal with. Whether it's the 30-something woman dipping her toe into online dating and having some bad first dates, navigating family meals with critical relatives, or battling social expectations of who she should be and how she should look. Intriguingly, author Gao also explores more introspective story threads, including Jennifer's struggle with certain people preferring her She-Hulk appearance. By holding up a mirror to certain people who have review-bombed the show on IMDb before it even premiered, much like Miss Marvel, Black Widow, and Captain Marvel before it, the series even and surprisingly address the current MCU craze. However, later episodes of the series unfortunately slip back into the particular mold with in-jokes, easter eggs, references, and cameos packed in aplenty while earlier episodes of the series refreshingly stray from the traditional MCU template and even poke fun at it. For instance, in one of the cases of the week, Jen is representing Emil Blonsky or Abomination at his parole hearing with Tim Roth repeating his role from The Incredible Hulk. Despite Jen promising the audience at the beginning of the series that the show won't be just huge MCU cameo fest, even the fact that the Hulk was recast since the movie's made in jest, as Ruffalo remarks that the character was totally different when he faced the Abomination, so that the Sorcerer Supreme may finally catch up on a lot of bingeable TV box sets, she then helps Benedict Wong's character Wong file a copyright claim against a hack magician who is abusing the mysterious arts and transporting audience members to other realms. The cage fighting scenes in Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings are helped by Roth and Wong's entrances, but too often Wong, or Wongers as you'll soon come to know him, and other male supporting characters take center stage instead of Jennifer. Jennifer even says out loud at one point that having the Doctor Strange actors on the show is, quote, like giving the show Twitter armor for a week. She-Hulk attorney at law doesn't seem to have the freedom to fully embrace the female lens despite the show's promising start as it remains bound by the template it frequently mocks, particularly with the previous revelation of the Daredevil appearance looming big. 
Given that the man without fear has been confirmed to come in the series at the point, wearing his red and yellow suit no less, some viewers will definitely be turning in primarily for his arrival, detracting from Jennifer's main plot, especially as Kevin Feige announced that the hero will shortly be getting his own Disney Plus series. Daredevil Born Again Before She-Hulk, the major television series based on the Marvel Cinematic Universe had, on average, only a few cameo appearances in each season, as opposed to She-Hulk's at least four very verified cameos and more rumored appearances. Given the caliber of the Emmy-winning star who played at least 13 distinct clones of herself in Orphan Black, it feels especially wrong that there may be a lack of trust in the original female-led courtroom comedy in the series. This is unfair to the supporting cast as a whole, particularly given the engaging chemistry between the charismatic Muslaney and Ginger Gonzaga, as Jen's closest friend and paralegal Nikki Ramos. We've only begun to scratch the surface of this charismatic core group, but Arrow star Josh Segarra is also endearing his fellow lawyer Augustus Pug Pugsley especially when he lets loose with Walter and Ramos at their neighborhood pub. The evidence doesn't seem promising so far, but the jury is still deciding on whether the series is actually guilty of weakening She-Hulk's storyline in favor of MCU cameos. Let's just hope that the show's creator, Jessica Gao, opposes this early indulgence and isn't overruled by it because Tatiana Maslany and Jennifer Walters both deserve their day in the spotlight. Plus, there's also the issue that if they keep on reintroducing some of the existing Marvel characters and elements in the show, chances are they'll mess up the timeline. Like in the latest episode of She-Hulk, when it referenced Spider-Man No Way Home's memory spell. That has already been made worse by the program, which also appears to have broken the timeline when footage of the altercation between Wong and Abomination appeared even after Bruce's arm had recovered. It turns out that wasn't She Timeline Hulk's disruption to date. When Wong and She-Hulk meet to discuss the fight with Abomination in She-Hulk Episode 3, it's a very shocking moment. Wong seems to be alluding to the spell from Spider-Man No Way Home that made everyone forget about Peter Parker as he discusses ideas for what they could do once the Abomination combat footage leaked. Wong promises to never again delete anyone's memory. While Wong did not participate in casting the spell to wipe Peter Parker's memories, Spider-Man No Way Home gave the impression that he was adamantly opposed to anyone doing so. Therefore, it stands to reason that this is the incident She-Hulk is alluding to in her line. Moving on to Phase 5, Marvel needs to step up their game and stop relying on cameos to get fans and viewers hooked under the show. Despite how well liked the MCU Disney Plus programs have been, there are a few problems that keep coming up. That includes employing cameos to maintain audience interest, which detracts from the main characters of the story as evidenced by Walter's remark in She-Hulk Attorney at Law Episode 3. Since there was a built-up expectation that a major Marvel character would appear like Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange and Wanda's putative father Magneto, it also affected the otherwise well-done WandaVision finale. Moving ahead, Marvel Studios must put its series' main storyline first and stop depending on viewers' curiosity about potential guest stars. In addition to this, pace problems have also arisen. Marvel Studios' television products follow a formula which, like their films do, yet they're frequently divided uncomfortably. This was somehow solved in She-Hulk Attorney at Law by tackling Walter's backstory early on rather than delaying until later in the series. Without having to use flashbacks, the project can concentrate on the story and it is truly telling. The use of bogus antagonists like Hawkeye's Echo, Alakwa Cox, and Miss Marvel's Clandestines, rather than establishing the real antagonist early on, has also drawn criticism. Seeing character crossovers is one of the biggest benefits of the MCU's interconnectedness. Marvel Studios' Disney Plus shows are utilizing this advantage, but going overboard has certain drawbacks as well. To begin with, it's absolutely unfair for Project's titular character to be overshadowed by the possibility of another MCU hero making an appearance, especially ones who are only beginning their journeys. Like Walters and She-Hulk Attorney at Law, Marvel Studios should try to come up with a more effective solution to this issue in the future rather than just making light of it. With that, we're ending today's video about She-Hulk's cameo problem. So what do you guys think? Any suggestions on how Marvel can tackle this problem? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel with the notification bell on for more videos like these before you go, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.